I am truly shocked that nobody else is really talking about this, which is the Mars 2 Pro has one great feature that is so fundamentally flawed, it eventually turns into a health and safety hazard. What on earth am I talking about? I'm talking about the activated carbon filter. Now hear me out. I come from the world of laser cutting, where we use activated carbon filters all the time to scrub the air of smoke and VOCs, and VOCs are exactly what a resin printer makes. Now, one thing we do know in laser cutting is that we need to change this activated carbon filter every two to six months, no matter what, because the activated carbon filter becomes completely saturated with all the things that it's pulling out of the air and eventually does nothing. And that is where the problem lies. As you can see, the Mars 2 Pro has an activated carbon filter in it. We don't change it every two or six months time. There are no replacement parts for it, no instructions for it at all. So what happens? Well, with time, you're gonna realize that whenever you're printing, it's starting to smell a lot more like resin. That is because the filter system is now doing the opposite role and just filling your room with fumes from inside of the enclosure. And that there is what I basically pointed out to Elgu. Of course, the first thing they pointed me to, because they obviously know that this is a problem, is their little mini filters. I think these are great, I truly do. They are fantastic. I love it that they're so small so that anybody can fit them into their own resin printers. Doesn't matter if you have an Elgu one or not. But they only have this teeny tiny little activated carbon filter in it. That probably only lasts two or three months. So that's why they give you a spare. And that one also only lasts two or three months. So what do you do after that? Well, they don't sell those little filters separately. They expect you to buy another pack. And that, I just, I can't get along with that. So how can we fix this? I had a long, hard talk with Elgu and eventually figured out how we can make our own activated carbon filters, both for the Mars 2 Pro and for the mini filters, and that's exactly what I'm gonna show you in this video. Now, this is a very messy process, as you can see. So for those that don't wanna deal with the hassle of it, I'm gonna sell these online and it's linked down in the description. For the rest of you, let me show you step-by-step step how to go about and do this. Now, one last little note, take this with a pinch of salt, but when I was talking to Elgu about this, they told me that if we changed our activated carbon filters ourselves, it would not void our warranty. Here's the TLDR for those in a hurry. Get yourself an activated carbon filter, cut it down to size, clean up all the mess, get into the Mars 2 Pro and remove the filter casing, replace the activated carbon filter, put everything back together and you're sorted for another little while. Now let's go into some more detail. First and foremost, of course, you need to get yourself an activated carbon filter block. Now we're gonna to need to cut this down. So to cut it down, we're gonna be using a metal hacksaw and it has to be a metal hacksaw. I just get one of these and put a whole bunch of duct tape on one side and just use it like that. The wooden ones just chip away far too aggressively and will literally crumble this block. So if you want a nice cut, use a metal one. Additionally, if you're getting inside of your Mars 2 Pro, you need some extra little bits. I'm using my Fix-It kit here, but what you really need here are two hex bits, one that is two millimeters and the other one that is 2.5 millimeters. And then you also need a JSI or a Phillips head, which is about size one. And lastly, I would say that you need a silicon mat if you're going to be cutting your own activated carbon block because it is so messy. I kid you not, this is a real pain and that's why I'm wanting to sell these to help you guys out. Now, of course, for those of you that are just looking to change the mini filters, it's very simple. Just pop that right there and that's how you get into your mini filters. Now let's talk about how to get inside of the Mars 2 Pro. First and foremost, you can see on the side here, there are four screws to open up the back shroud. Here, you're gonna be using the two millimeter hex bits. Once that is removed, you need to make sure that there is no cover on, no build plate on, and no tray because you're about to tip the entire printer because you need to undo some screws to make the activated carbon enclosure movable. And that's where you're going to be using your JSI-1 or Phillips heads. So you're gonna unscrew those. And while you're at it, there's also these two other hex bits on the left-hand side that you have to unscrew. I don't take these all the way out, but by all means you can. And that's where you'll be using the 2.5 millimeters. Once all of that is loose, just 
put everything back down to the correct orientation and you'll see that's going to be a little bit tricky to get that enclosure out. The key thing here is there's a USB cable that runs underneath that enclosure. You have to lift up the enclosure and push that USB cable all the way to the back so then you're able to pull it out. Now from here I pull it out to the left so you've got to pull the encasing all the way to the left and then it's going to start to pull apart the Mars 2 Pro a little bit and then there's a little bit of force that you have to just get that legs out a little bit of tilting and eventually it'll come out. Now I've already taken this out a couple of times so there's a different clip here showing you that you then need to snip away or pull away some little hot glue that is keeping the old activated carbon filter in place. Once that's out it's quite simple just take that out now you have a size reference so you're able to cut the activated carbon cube. So let's go and talk about that. Put everything out to the side, make sure that no dust can get to your 3D printer at this point because this carbon really goes some really fine dust and you do not want this on the underside of your LCD screen because then, well, you're pretty much screwed. So from there, we're going to get the block out of the box, make sure that it's on something that you can clean up pretty simply. Just use the actual activated carbon block that you've taken out from your printer or from the mini filter as a size reference, go in between and it's that simple. You're just gonna cut it down with your blade now. Once it's cut all the way down, you can cut it the other way and then just do a quick size check. Most of these big blocks come in 10 centimeters by 10 centimeters. You only need to go by five centimeters, five centimeters by seven centimeters to be able to fit inside of this encasing for the Mars 2 Pro. So you're gonna have to cut this down on the side. Now, when you're cutting this down on the side, it's a lot harder. So take it nice and slow because if you speed this up, it literally will just crumble into pieces. Of course, for those of you that are making the mini filters, just be aware that you're dealing with some very small filters here. So take it nice and slow. Those two are going to be for sale down in the description. Now, once you have that sorted, clean everything up because you're about to bring the resin printer back to the same place, maybe the same place, maybe you're cutting it somewhere else. Once that's done, it's pretty simple. You're just gonna replace the activated carbon block. So you put in the new one and you can use hot glue, but put frankly, I just didn't. What I do is just get some little kitchen towel that I fold up and put it either side of the block to make sure that it doesn't rattle about inside of there. Now, once that's in there, it's time to put it all back together. So again, you're gonna come in at a little angle. This time you're gonna pull apart the Master Pro, just the smallest little bit, and then just slightly push in and eventually it's going to click into place as the fan goes into position inside the casing. Once that is in place, it's a simple thing of just tightening everything back together. One little thing here, the screws of the casing for the car activated carbon case, they are self-tapping. So the best way to keep these self-tapping enclosure in the best nick possible is basically you wanna put the screw in, then undo a little bit till it clicks, and that's when you start screwing in. If not, eventually, once you've done this, maybe three, four, five, ten 10 times, there's gonna be no thread there at all, and you're probably gonna to have to 3D print yourself a new casing, which is probably something I'm gonna do down the line anyway. Now, make sure you also tighten up the other two screws, the 2.5 millimeter ones then, then put everything back to the correct orientation, push the shrouding back on nice and simply, screw up everything back together, and that's it. You now have changed your activated carbon filter that simply. And there you have it. I really do hope this helps you out. A huge thank you to my patrons. You guys are absolutely awesome, and it's thanks to you guys that I'm even able to make Maker Tales. And if you're enjoying what I'm making here and you think I'm worthy of your support, I would love to see you there too. Don't forget that we have a Discord and that's linked down in the description. Thank you for watching, keep making, and let the quest continue.